Hello YouTube, welcome back for a, another awesome episode of Project Golf Course Lawn Season 5. So question I've gotten lots of times from uh, viewers is the slope. So you go, you go out and you get you one of these nice fancy real mowers and you're saying, okay, this thing's awesome, but when I put it on a slope, it creates a mess. Like how do you get a decent cut um, when on a slope? So let me get down here so you can kind of see the angle I'm working with. Uh, so you can see that's that's pretty... That's not terrible, but I mean, if you look here, if I'm standing at the bottom of like the sidewalk here, and I look at the top, so my eyes are probably uh, right about where the sidewalk is. So it's, it's probably a, uh, I don't know, six, seven foot, seven foot elevation change from the bottom to the top. So it's enough to where you kind of need to pay attention to what you're doing. So the kind of going into what, uh, what the, the parts of allowing you to get a good cut with a real mower is, it's two things. You want the mower to be as level as possible, and then also something that's often overlooked is you want the weight to be as even as possible. So if we take the mower and I set it and I, and I, and I make all my passes lengthwise, lock it here. so we get the mower and I make all my passes lengthwise, that's gonna work out pretty well at the very top here where, the, where, the, where it's you know, it's it's a slope, but it's still fairly level. But as soon as you get into this section of the lawn, where it's there's definitely a lot more um, a lot more slope. What you're going to find, let me move it over here. What you're going to find is is the portion because again we're dealing with not only being level but also weight. There's going to be more weight on this side of the mower than on this side. So what's gonna happen is even though the, the, the mower looks level, what you're gonna have, what, you, what's, what the net result is gonna be is that you're gonna get a lower cut. So kind of just showing you guys where I am. Like, so the slope is going this way. So more weights on this side than this side. This is uphill, this is downhill. So more weight's gonna be on this portion of the mower than here. So what that's gonna cause is a, it's gonna be slight, but a, but a slightly lower cut on this portion and a slightly higher cut on this portion, which isn't that big a deal when you're talking about one pass, but whenever you do that over and over, so you're cutting, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, what you're gonna find is you're gonna have like, um, the appearance is gonna almost look like steps. So you're gonna have like a, um, like a higher portion and then low, and then like a slightly higher portion and low, and a slightly higher portion and low. I mean, it's, it's subtle, but it's really annoying when you, um, when you see it, especially if you're cutting the grass a little bit taller, you, it really shows up. So when, and when I say taller, I mean like inch and a half. So if you're like at, you know, half an inch doesn't really make a difference. What will happen then is you just, you'll just start scalping the lawn um, if you start going really low. But really at about, and if you're going for like ultimate, you know, optimal stripe action, so inch, inch and a half, um, you're going to notice that you're going to have like this kind of a step, like this thick step wavy look, which just looks kind of, kind of crappy. So... There's a couple ways to go about it. So you can you can make your passes like this, which I don't recommend, or you can make your passes up and down, which I also don't recommend. So the uh, that you get you get in the same issue mowing uphill and downhill. One, it's it's slightly dangerous coming downhill because it's hard to control the speed of the mower. But also, same thing, um, the weight is going to just turn the mower here so you can you can illustrate it. The weight is going to be mainly on the rear the rear portion or the, the wheels right so you remember all the cutting happens like the bed knife is right there and if we have the weight like b behind behind the bed knife behind the reels unless you're making a conscious effort to kind of put some um, look so slightly upward pressure into the mower as you're going uphill so if you just let it kind of take itself it's going to want to try and pop a wheelie a little bit which is going to kind of again it's going to bounce slightly and you're going to get like a nasty looking cut it's not going to look good um, if you're really really careful it can work if you're if you're putting in just a little bit of upward pressure so you're ensuring that that roller stays in the turf the entire time but again i don't recommend that because it's it's difficult to do uh, consistently and just from a safety standpoint going up and down hills is not not as ideal so best of both worlds diagonally so what i do is my process and i i um i cut them the lawn this part of the lawn this way every single time is the first thing is i do is i make a trim pass so i'll start um here and i'll cut up down around down and then a uh, pass all along the bottom here because um so that way i've got the edges taken care of and then from that standpoint once that's done i can move this thing one-handed up here And then once that done, that's done, I'll get something to make passes. Lock it. 
I'll make passes back and forth this way. So up, down, up, down. The reason why it's important to, um, to get your trim pass done, especially near the bottom, is as you get, as you're making these passes up and down, you're cutting diagonally, what you're gonna find is um, it's not going to, you're not gonna get as good a cut along this edge because the this portion of the reel, like that portion here, this is gonna uh, impact the sidewalk um, while some of it still have this portion is still on the grass. So just anything that's along the edge is just not gonna be as good. So you wanna kind of take care of that using a traditional pass where you're going down and then around, you're kind of just kind of framing framing up your cut and then the real cutting when you're doing um uh not not real as in the real but like the actual the most of the cutting that you're doing uh is happening inside that border that you've cut so making your passes diagonally does a couple of things one it kind of satisfies both those requirements the mower stays fairly flat um throughout you know the entire time when you're mowing um, and then also importantly, the weight stays fairly, fairly um, evenly distributed. So the weight, when you're cutting diagonally on a slope, is, is primarily on the center. So it kind of like, you think that that's, that's technically where most of the weight is, and then it kind of distributes out that way. So in the end, the net result is that you get a better cut. Like if you look at my lawn, you don't really see very much scalping anywhere per se. You know, it looks... The cut looks pretty, pretty even, which is which is kind of hard to do when you're talking about a mower that's 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 um that is flat. It doesn't have one of those floating heads like the Toros or some of the more more fancy mowers. So, um, so that's that's the trick, and you can kind of see some of from what I cut yesterday how the the the, the stripes are diagonal, and also from a, from a from a street appeal, from a curb appeal, looks kind of cool, right? Like if you're cutting like this, no one can really see the stripes as good. If you're cutting like this, they can see it when they're right on with the house, but when you're diagonal. You know they're rolling down the street and they can see those lines so there's also that too if if you care about that kind of thing which let's be honest we all kind of care right so that's all the advice i have on that um when dealing with the slope uh the the key things are you want the mower to stay flat you want the weight to be even and you want to be safe so while you can make passes um up and down like i said while you can make passes you know like up and down the slope it's not as safe it's just it's just and, and it's really difficult to consistently get a good cut because the mower's either either going to want to dig in as you're going downhill or it's going to want to like pop a wheelie when you're when you're coming uphill so it's just ideally just not the best way to go so my recommendation is to cut diagonal and uh and yeah i get the better results that way so hopefully hopefully you guys found this useful uh please uh comment let me know what you guys think let me know how you guys do it maybe you guys can share something or a technique that i'm not considering or a better way of doing it that would uh you know produce even a better result than uh than diagonal cutting so i'll look forward to hearing from you so please like share comment subscribe um uh, if there's any other content you guys want to see or any other questions you have please let me know um, put them in the comments below and I look, look forward to uh, you know, interacting with you guys. Again, if you have not checked out my blog as yet, um, please do so. It's ron-henry.com forward slash golf course lawn. That's where I have like all the, all the updates of everything that's, that's happened with the lawn as well as the recipe for how to do all this stuff. So again, hope you guys found this useful and I will look forward to, uh, to talking with you guys in the comments and uh, see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.